Britain is in the throes of a shopaholic frenzy. We're all buying more stuff than we could ever possibly need. I've spent £100,000 easily. But what if you never, ever threw anything away? There's just so much stuff. What if instead of owning your possessions, your possessions owned you? We can't move in this room, can we? It's just a pigsty, isn't it? In this series, shopaholic hoarders get a short, sharp shock as they confront the possessions, burying them alive. How did all that fit in our apartment? Good God. This is my living room. I'm sleeping on the floor. This is an extreme collector. Desperate to tackle their hoarding habit once and for all, their homes will be purged of their overwhelming hoard. The DVDs, magazines, toys, clothes, the lot. Is that honestly all mine? When you see it all laying out like this, doesn't it make you wonder how you've managed to function? <laughs> Experts will sell off their stuff and use the money to redesign their homes. <laughs> but will they be able to part with their prized possessions? I'm not selling it for less than two, Nick, I'm sorry. It's going terribly. Will these mountains of trash ever turn up hidden treasures? How can you have 50 single shoes? And will transforming their homes really transform their lives? Oh, it's wonderful. This is the business. Oh, wow. It's like a home rather than <laughs> like a student pad. I love it. Bromley, a wealthy borough in south-east London, full of gated communities, twee villages and even its own palace. But behind the doors of this three-bed semi is a right royal mess. Crammed to the rafters with piles upon piles of stuff. It's home to 42-year-old lab technician Barry Phillips. Ah. Uh. You know, young watch rooms move your chair around or turn around and do anything. Quite often things will fall off on top of you if you're not careful. The living room, the conservatory, the bedrooms, and even the stairs are piled high with so many of his possessions. Just moving throughout the house has become a daily struggle. You can get yourself upstairs without killing yourself, you're doing well. I've been collecting all sorts of things for years and it gets to a point, really, but you can't just move for the stuff. You're tripping over it. You have to move stuff to get where you want to get to. His collections include DVDs, VHS cassettes, boxes and boxes of Doctor Who toys. Exterminate! Exterminate! Countless copies of the Radio Times and heaps of radios passed down from his father. He news things. I get buried under other things, and then you don't discover them again for not literally a week or two, maybe a year or two. Barry's collections have got so out of hand, <laughs> his brother worries about bringing his children to the house. I thought I was a gunner, we can't come over for Sunday lunch with the kids. We can't even bring the youngest one over here for fear that he'll get crushed under a crate of DVDs or something. <laughs> There's just so much stuff. I think he would like to be proud of his living space. I think it looks so overwhelming to him that he literally can't see the wood for the trees. You just can't carry on existing like this, you know, it's just too much. And really, you just need some help sometimes just to be able to get your life back in some sort of order. Desperate for things to change, Barry has called in Nick Allen and Abigail Ahern to help him turn his life and home around. Nick Allen is an international dealer with 10 years of experience. In the course of my career, I've done deals all over the world. And do you know what the best part is? Helping people get the maximum value for their stuff. The money he raises will fund a redesign of Barry's home by Abigail Ahern, recently described as one of the UK's hottest interior designers. She'll reinvent Barry's key rooms and by doing so, hope to end his extreme hoarding behaviour once and for all. I believe that great design transforms lives. If you have a space that you truly love and respect, you won't want to clutter it up under a mound of stuff. 
The minute my clients walk through their doors, I want them to feel elevated and happy, that kind of squishy contentment you get when you've just downed a double whiskey. It's time for Nick and Abby to enter the fray. Wow. Oh my word. This is serious. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that says it. I've seen yeah. some big collections of stuff in yeah. my time. And only a few times before have I seen something this immense. It's huge, massive. It's a, really? bit, a lot of it, isn't there? Really? It's a lot oh. of it. I thought yes. it was quite small, really. No, <laughs> it's not small. I mean, why do you need our help? Silly question, but why? Um, well, it's just a question of um, not really easily being able to find stuff when you want to, and the fact you keep tripping over it. I don't see how you can use the space as a living room, because you've got to just clamber and jump and sort of do this. It certainly makes, it makes life difficult getting around here at the moment. It can't be very relaxing for you. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, there, there isn't really much of a living space here at the moment. I mean, the, the whole collection has grown and... There, there, there's literally, there isn't anywhere where two people can sit no. down and have a cup of tea or something like that. Barry, wouldn't it be lovely to be able to invite Mark and his family over to hang out here? Uh, yeah, I mean, it would be, yeah. Nick and Abby want to explore Barry's extraordinary hoard to learn more about him and see the scale of what they're dealing with. So much stuff. This is something else. I mean, this looks quite cool. And Oh, that is cool. Yeah, nice place like radio. Worth anything? Yeah. There's another radio. Maybe he's got something for radios. Be careful. This is very dangerous. Oh, my word. All these boxes are full. Doctor Who, Doctor Who, Doctor Who. This guy's a Doctor Who fan. I spent a fortune on this stuff. Tens and tens of thousands of pounds. At close to three billion pounds, the UK toy market is the biggest in Europe. Keeping toys in good condition and in their original packaging will protect their worth, but bear in mind, if they're mass-produced, they're unlikely to retain even their original sale value. Last year, a staggering 384 million toys were sold. That's six toys for every man, woman and child in the country. Some of the most collectible toys come from TV and film, like C-3PO and his little mate R2-D2 from the 1977 film Star Wars that are now worth around £500. And if you happen to own this 1971 version of the Cape Crusader, his sidekick Robin and their Batmobile, you'd be sitting on two and a half grand. Holy smoke! Toy collecting, it seems, is not child's play. This is a massive collection. Really, it's, I've never seen a Doctor Who and sci-fi collection this big in my life. Really? Ever. Nick could sell Barry's Doctor Who toys for hundreds of pounds, but while Barry is desperate to free up his home, it won't be easy for him to part with his prize collection. To some extent, all of this is like a massive security blanket for him. And for him to reclaim enough space to have a house back, he's going to have to get rid of 30, 40, even 50%, and that is going to be really, really hard on him. Nick and Abby are taking the whole lot to a warehouse. Barry's going to see just how out of control his enormous collection has got, in the hope that it will motivate him to change. The removals guys have turned up outside. Are you ready to start the process? Oh, gosh, uh, yeah. Barry, how are you feeling? Um, a bit, a bit scared, really, by the whole thing, really. It's, uh, it's a lot to take in. Tiny bit excited? Uh, I'm not sure about excited is a word. Um, apprehensive, maybe, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's give it a go. You've got some collection here, haven't you? As the packers start the daunting task of boxing up the hoard... Barry moves into his brother's house. And it's a real treat for his nephews, who get to spend some precious time with Uncle Barry. Hello, hello, boys. <laughs> so when it's all clear, can we come over and see it? And... Oh, I, I, I should expect so. <laughs> you looking forward to going to Uncle Barry's? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> see if we can get a barbecue in the garden. Oh, yeah, I'm sure we can arrange that. High five. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch! Ouch! 
It's taken three days to transfer Barry's possessions to a warehouse. And it's a sight to behold. Covering more than the area of two tennis courts. It includes a wall of over four and a half thousand CDs that stacked one on top of the other would reach halfway up the Blackpool Tower. To actually listen to the Magic Roundabout. Enough books and magazines to fill a library. How many Radio Times has he got? 25 copies of the same one. <gasps> of the same issue. A vast collection of vintage radios. Got well over 50 radios here. Amazing that these were just boxed up and lying around all over the house. More than three and a half thousand VHS cassettes with enough tape to stretch between Land's End and John O'Groats. Hundreds upon hundreds of Doctor Who toys still in their original packaging. And family heirlooms handed down to Barry. It's a very high quality early 20th century silver cigarette box. Nick needs to sell this stuff not only to raise money for the redesign, but more importantly to stop Barry from moving it all back home. But will the shock of seeing his hoard laid out be the first step towards culling his out-of-control collection? Would you consider reducing this collection by half? No. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Forty-two-year-old Barry Phillips is an obsessive collector. Especially all things Doctor Who. Oh, Time Lord Psychic Container. That's what everyone needs. But his collections are out of control, and he's been swallowed up by the mountain of possessions. Expert dealer Nick Allen is going to try to clear the hoard from his home by selling it all off. <laughs> Designer Abigail Ahern will then use the money to transform the main rooms in Barry's house with the aim of stopping his desire to hoard. Every item from his many out-of-control collections has been taken to a warehouse. Soon he will be taken there and made to confront it all in the hope it'll shock him into changing his ways. But first, Barry and his brother Mark have the chance to see his house, hoard free, for the first time in ten years. Wow. <laughs> it's bigger than you thought, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's, it's just a space, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's a bit emptier, I suppose. Now when it was, but you think that's a little understating the case, a little bit emptier. Yeah. Is that a <laughs> understatement there? Having been engulfed by his collections for a decade, it's unsettling for Barry to see the main rooms in his house empty. Put it this way, I can do this. Which uh, I definitely couldn't do before without risking life and limb. Yeah, maybe. Abby arrives to find out from Barry what kind of design ideas will inspire him to keep the place clutter-free. I'm desperate to create a scheme for Barry that makes him feel alive, that stirs something almost within him. Design really does change lives, and I want to give him a scheme that he so loves he won't want to clutter it up again. Wow. Hi, guys. Hi. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah, it's all right. You can see things, Barry. How's it feel? Yeah, empty. Empty. I mean, do you feel happier that you can see daylight and walls and floor? No, it just, it just reminds me how much I hate the colour of the walls. <laughs> you can easily <laughs> remedy the colour of the walls. Obviously, we want it to be quite family orientated, so we need space, but we also want it to be quite Jewish because it's your pad. What would be your perfect design? vibe for this space? Hmm. Well, for, probably a decent entertainment system, you know, sort of all, it's all integrated. Yes. Nice big TV in the corner. Or well, miss the desk, to be honest. You'll miss the desk? Oh, yeah. Mm. Could have your desk maybe here, looking out of the window. Might be nicer than just shoving it against the wall and always looking at the wall. So you've actually, you're just using the space a little bit more. Yeah, OK. 
if we could agree that those upper rooms are the rooms that you have all your storage and your library and down here is a bit more of a zone where you can hang out, Mark and his family can hang out and there's not stuff on every single wall. Oh, I don't know. I like stuff on every single wall. <laughs> I know, but that's what I kind of want to do. Give you a space that you're really happy to be in and you don't want to clutter it up with a zillion things because we can do that upstairs. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yay, that's a positive thing. <laughs> Barry doesn't give much away, but I think I've got a few ideas of a scheme that he'll really love, which is really important to me because I don't want him cluttering it up again and he won't if he totally loves it. Having met with Barry and taken his ideas on board, Abby gets to work on the redesign. Her plan? A retro bachelor retreat. I've put together this mood board. It's bold, it's brash, but it makes a real statement. Currently, Barry's walls are a red and yellow combination. I'm proposing painting them a beautiful dark brown. It's called Bull Rush. It's snuggly, it's cosy. It might be a little bit out of Barry's comfort zone, but I'm really hoping he'll love it. Barry's desk looks like it's going to literally topple over and decapitate him. So I'm going to build him an L-shaped one, which then feels very much an integral part of the overall scheme. I'm going to paint it a bright, zingy, burnt orange, which will look beautiful against those brown walls. I'm turning Barry's conservatory into a really beautiful dining room. This is the star. It's an incredible, beautiful, psychedelic wallpaper, which I'm hoping he'll love. It's not cheap, it's £52 a roll, but it will totally transform that space. In the spare room upstairs, I'm getting rid of the lilac walls and painting them a really beautiful, soft, masculine grey. Then I'm adding oodles of storage and lots of lighting. I desperately want this redesign of Barry's to give him a shot in the arm to tantalise and surprise Barry so he won't go back to his old ways. Abby's scheme has a minimum budget of nearly three grand. Barry will need to let go of a lot of his stuff to raise that kind of money. Barry's at the warehouse with his brother. Having had his life and home dominated by his stuff for a decade, He's about to come face to face with his entire horde. Good grief. <laughs> Good God. What? The CDs? <laughs> oh, just a few. Good God, Barry. Quite a bit of stuff, isn't there? You could make a bed out of that, couldn't you? This is the floor space of a box room. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, and it's up to waist high. Could we start with by saying we don't even need these anymore? No. Barry wants to reduce the number of possessions he owns, but the reality of parting with any of them is much harder than he ever imagined. CDs. I've got thousands. Would you consider reducing this collection by half? No. You're going to drown in them. It's a two foot thick wall that's waist high. Well, I've got a few CDs. You've got duplicates here. Rialto, Rialto. Surely we don't want Rialto, do we? Why not? I'm looking down here and I've got one, two, three, four, five six of these movie Dalek figures. One would be great. Where's the fun in having the same thing six times over, putting it in a box, shoving it on the floor? Well, if you're not a collector. But even <laughs> if you are a collector, why would you have six of them? Would you ever watch Handy Pandy? Why is that there? This is classic, simple as that. This is a problem. Barry's even clinging on to his 5,000 strong Radio Times collection. What do you think all these are worth? Probably not a lot at the moment, but it's in the future, maybe. I don't see the point in keeping them. This stuff's got to go in the bin and recycled. What's the point of that? Uh, well, the thing is, I mean, in, in, I'm talking not talking about now, I'm talking about the future. Magazines take up valuable space in your home, and while there is a market for certain rare original editions, Buying everyday copies in bulk, hoping they will one day rise in value, is a big mistake. Successful collectors are selective. First and last issues will generally be the most valuable. 
If this 1953 first edition of Playboy featuring Marilyn Monroe doesn't get you excited, then maybe the £3,500 valuation will. Even kids' magazines can be worth a bob or two. This first edition Beano from 1938 would fetch a cheeky four grand. But it's a tricky market to find the really valuable stuff. Nearly 90% of the vintage magazines for sale on eBay go for less than a tenner. 1965 Radio Times, the funeral of Sir Winston Churchill. Yeah. I mean, probably one of the most historically important figures yeah. in, in British history of the last 100 or so years. Yeah. It's taken 50 years for this to be worth five quid. There's one on there right now for a fiver on eBay. I had a look. Nobody's bought it. I mean, how much is Bill Oddie going to be worth in 50 years' time? Nothing. That's your opinion. With Barry finding it hard to let go, his brother Mark is becoming increasingly frustrated. You bought 30 copies of the Radio Times, 30 copies. That's not sane. Well, that, that was the madness. Well, you, you the future. The future when you're dead. They won't accumulate in value for 40 years. You'll be dead. Or you'll be an old man. You won't want them anymore. Wouldn't you want those 40 years to have pleasure in your house, in your surroundings? I really hope that you understand that where this is coming from, that I care about you and I, I really want you to be in a better place. You've got to really say, OK, I'm going to cull this. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe. Barry may be reluctant to let go of his DVDs and magazines, but there are some parts of his hoard he is willing to say goodbye to. Don't really need a huge, a huge massive collection like this. But I to mean, keep one or two would be lovely in terms yeah. of the heritage. Oh, you, yeah, you def def it. definitely, yeah. He even agrees to sell some of the family silver. You don't need two of these, do you? No. Yeah. They're quite valuable. It's a solid silver, early 20th century desktop cigarette box in mint condition. I could probably go because it's got no practical use. It's been a long day, but I suppose um, I think you're making progress, if ever so slightly. I'm still not convinced that Barry's really got on top of it yet. I think he's got a lot of tough decisions to make with regards to what he keeps and what he lets go. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think he's going to let go of 50% of this or not? I have to believe that he will somehow whittle it down, because I think Mark is a great catalyst, and he's pushing and he's pushing and he's pushing, and I think although they niggle, he listens to Mark, so I think that we should be upbeat and hope that Mark can convince him to sell it, you can get tons of money, and I can do something with that interior of his, and then wham, bam, we've done it. Very good at these. Several days have passed and Barry and Mark have had time to reflect. <laughs> Slippery, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. Barry has been slowly reducing his hoard, but with the great bulk still remaining, Mark wants to encourage his brother further. You know that I love you and you know that I, I, I care for you. Mm. And it's not about yeah. having a go at you, it's about trying well, to... Well, I, I know, I know, I know, but sometimes it feels like it. You come over a bit as, as nagging. To be honest, I know, I know it's not necessarily what you're intending, but it does come across as that. I recognise it's been really hard, but I think there's still more that has to go in order to bring the house back to something that you, you, you can live in and move around in. There's this uh, very good <coughs> hypnotherapist that's been recommended. Um, I, might, I mean, I can give it a go. I mean, if you think it might help. Let's see what um, happens. Yeah, I mean, why not, you know? Might, might as well, you know, the change is as good as uh, whatever, you know? <laughs> I do care for you. I know, I know. Hoping for a breakthrough, Mark takes Barry to see the hypnotherapist. So I want you to start by taking a nice deep breath. Not a great deal is known about the psychology of hoarding. Although hypnotherapy is one treatment that has been shown to help as people in a hypnotic trance are often far more receptive to the idea of change. All the muscles around your eyes relax. 
a tremendous amount can be achieved as your mind becomes calm. Following the hypnotherapy, Barry returns to the warehouse with his brother and nephew to continue purging his possessions. Nice little day out. The other brother. What would you need to see this uh, chap who's a hypnotherapist? Refocused me in terms of myself to sort of go through stuff a bit more objectively. What's going to be keeping probably about 100% of the Doctor Who videos, but going through this lot, probably going to be only going to be keeping maybe about. I don't know, five, ten percent, if that. It seems, in his new frame of mind, Barry is finally beginning to part with a significant proportion of his collection. Ah, uh, saying goodbye to all friends. But to get Abby the money she needs to complete the redesign, Nick will need to squeeze every penny he can from Barry's possessions. I can see a grand's worth of stock here. I'd want to buy it for 250 quid. That's not going to work for us, though. Compulsive hoarder Barry Phillips was struggling to part with his possessions. Surely we don't want Rialto, do we? Why not? But with a bit of hypnotherapy... Your mind becomes calmer and clearer. ..and the support of his brother, he's finally found the strength to let many of his prized possessions go, including half his collection of Doctor Who toys. And Nick knows exactly where to find buyers hungry for Time Lord memorabilia. Take this one. Um, I'll, I'll bring this. Doctor Who conventions like this are the perfect place to come and sell Barry's Doctor Who toys. There's obviously a ready-made market for us here. Everybody that comes through the doors is a bona fide, genuine Doctor Who enthusiast. I think it's really important to do business face to face. In the buzz of the moment, you can close so many deals at a fair, you can't do that on the internet. And there's another sales trick Nick has up his sleeve. I kind of wanted to do something today that was different and hopefully it's going to lead to some more business. OK. I've got somebody to introduce to you today... Yeah. ..who's going to be helping us sell. Oh, great. And that is... Doctor Who number six, Colin Baker. Oh, wow. Why don't you take a look over there? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's Barry, yes? Yes, that's right. How Colin. are you, Barry? Yeah, Colin. And nice these are your children. Uh, as it were. I think I'll keep that. I look quite intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you've just seen Barry's hoard. <laughs> Less than three weeks ago, Barry was refusing to part with any of his stuff, let alone his beloved Doctor Who toys. Now, with the help of a former Time Lord, he's ready to let half of them go. That's very sweet of you, thank you. Now, this is quite different. That's different to the normal event I attend. I'm here for Barry. We've got to liberate him from dependency on bits of cardboard and cellophane with things inside them. Uh, Barry is a man who was being restricted, perhaps, shall we say, by your possessions, weren't you? Well, just a little bit, yeah. I mean, I've been collecting and collecting and collecting for many years, and um, it was getting to a stage whereby I couldn't quite fit anything else into the house, so today I'm sort of pleading with you all, you know, please help me get my, my, my living space back into some sort of order by uh, acquiring a small proportion of my, my long life to, uh, of collecting of Doctor Who memorabilia. Thank you very much. <laughs> plenty of side men, plenty of Daleks. Having delivered his marketing pitch, Barry's Doctor Who sale gets underway. You just pop round the corner to see Colin. He'll be happy to inscribe them for you. And with Doctor Who number six adding his own personal touch, Barry's toys are flying off the shelves. 15 signs. Yep. OK. Thank you very much, sir. Am I still good to get one over on a side? Uh, okay. <laughs> Come on, everybody. It's lots and lots of Doc 2 goodies here. Without some sort of retail trick, this stock could be quite difficult to shift. But bringing it to a convention 
getting Doctor Who here, especially him. The loud buzz, the action, one sale leads to another. That way we've been able to really inflate the prices. We've got more than what Barry actually paid for some of this stuff new. Brilliant. Anyone wants a cookie jar? Really great having Paul in here. He's really been great persuading people to part with their hard-earned cash. He's a great chap. There you are, that's a bargain at 15 pounds, I think, don't you? You're a gent. Fantastic. High five, High five, five dude. High five. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Look at that pile of cash. 1,200 quid. 1,200? Honestly, that's not bad at all. I'm pleased. Yeah. That's more than I thought we'd get. Good day's work there, a very yeah. good day. Yeah. yeah. Couple of boxes left. Yeah. But, uh, Pronounced success, I would say. Oh, yes, yes, good. Absolutely. Well done, lads. Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome. Barry is starting to let go of his hoard, and Abby finally has the money to begin redesigning the main areas of his home. I can't tell you how much I want to give this scheme to Barry. I want it to be bold, I want it to be statement-worthy, I want it to be draw-droppingly beautiful in order to inspire Barry so he doesn't clutter it up again. Abby has listened to Barry's ideas and wants to give him a retro bachelor retreat. It's quite cool, isn't it? That's like three-dimensional, isn't it? Yeah. That's really nice. She plans to turn the conservatory into a dining area and make the lounge a combined media centre and workspace. I want to give him kind of an l shape desk so he feels a lot more integrated into the room because at the moment his back faces the wall and I just want him to feel a little bit more part of the room so that's the plan. So I'm Barry. Da -da -da -da. I like this. This is nice now it's in the room. I'm looking at the rest of my room and then I'm swiveling over here. Perfect. The perfect home office should be an aspirational clutter-free place to work. This one is super modern and the glass desk adds a touch of lightness to the room. It also complements the stunning glazed window. In small spaces, glass furniture helps to make things feel more open. In this case, wooden furniture would make the environment feel cumbersome and heavy. In contrast, this home office works because the desk furniture ties in with the other wooden features. Like the floor and shutters, so it doesn't stand out, it blends in but this is a home office with a real wow factor. Funky furniture and lighting teamed with floor-to-ceiling bookcases make this space feel interesting, and the glossy floors reflect the light so it feels larger than it really is. There's also plenty of storage, a key factor in a successful domestic office. Ordinarily, I would never stick a desk in a living room but Barry uses his desk all the time I mean he works here he eats off his desk he's insisted that I've got to have a desk in the living room it's got to be a fairly big desk so the only thing that I could think of in order to make it a bit funky was to give it a jolt of bright color the media center is going to look beautiful in here Barry is going to love it he's going to hang out in a really big armchair, watch movies, all very beautiful. However, um, his TV is really old, so I need to get him a beautiful new flat-screen TV. If Barry is to get the home Abby has planned for him, then he'll need to let go of more of his hoards so Nick can sell it. They've come to an antiques and crafts centre in Battlesbridge, hoping to sell Barry's radios direct to a trader. This place isn't Bond Street. People aren't selling really high-end things here. Prices range from a couple of quid up to a couple of thousand. It's perfectly pitched to sell cheaper end antiques and collectibles. Nick's identified a potential customer, but it won't be easy to sell the radios as they've been rotting away in Barry's conservatory for the past 10 years. I mean, there's best part of 50 radios here. Most of them are damaged. He's going to be buying a lot of these just for the little valves, the little knobs for spares and repairs. And I'm going to try and use the really good condition ones which st still aren't particularly collectible as the leverage for this deal. From our point of view, we would like to try and keep the collection together and sell it in one go. Yeah. It's a lot cleaner for us. Yeah. And that way, hopefully, your gambling instinct will come out and you'll see the good ones and think, well, all right, I'll take the lot. I'd want to buy it for 250 quid to make it worthwhile. That's not going to work for us, though. 
I mean, these individually, these rates are going to retail out 68 quid. They're clean, they're mint condition. Some of these HMVs with push button knobs are quite desirable amongst the collectors. The Bakelite ones are desirable. You're going to sell the best ones and then you're going to get less left with uh, the 40 if you won't. I mean, if you offset the good ones against the broken ones, I think it's going your way. There's nothing here that you could immediately put on, on the shelf well, and say this is like a, in perfect condition. Well, I think there's maybe 10, maybe 10 that could go straight out. There's probably another 10 that if you wiped over with polish, or even some wax, some of the wooden retro cases, especially if you're just selling them as like a prop. 300 is the right price, I reckon, and, uh, but I would, just to close the deal, split that difference again, <laughs> say 350 and that is it. I can see a grand's worth of stock here on a slow deal. Yeah, we want the quick yeah. deal. We yeah, want the quick yeah, deal and yeah. get out. We want a quick release on this deal. One, one final one in a tenner, tenner for luck, £360. Is that it? That's it. If it's 370 we'd wish you all the best and I reckon you can easily double your money. OK, because I like you. 370 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. OK. okay. Well, Thank you very Cheers. much. Thank you. 370 was a great deal because of the condition of most of those radios. Yeah, we might have got a little bit more in auction. But that would have been time, expenses. That's the best thing to do. Sell the whole lot, one package, one dealer, and run. 370 for those radios. That was a good deal. I think so. Yeah. I shook his hand extra firm. Yeah, well, I hope you didn't break it. <laughs> <laughs> but will the wheeling and dealing be worth it when it comes to the final design? Wow. wow. Barry Phillips is a collector whose hoard has overwhelmed his home. Having had it clear, designer Abigail O'Hearn is now putting the finishing touches to a radical redesign. I'm really excited with how it's all coming together. I think yeah. Barry will love it. So much so that I think that he won't want to reoffend with all his hoarding stuff. And I think, if I can be as bold as saying, that it might change his life. But there's still one more deal to do. Within Barry's hoard, Nick's unearthed two gems, a silver cigarette box and a pair of vases. He comes to Gray's Antique Market in central London to see a dealer he knows. We're just around the corner from Bond Street. If we're going to get the top price for a piece, this is the place to do it. Hey, Barry. All right, there. How are you doing? I'm all right, you? Yeah, fine, thanks. Well, this is the moment of truth for your family silver. The price of silver can go up and down, and unlike gold, it's notoriously volatile. Silver is currently around £20 an ounce. That's a six-fold increase over the last decade. And antiques made of silver can be worth a lot more than just their metal price. This tankard from 1786 is worth £5,000. That's double the price of similar pieces, as it was made by Hester Bateman, England's only female silversmith at the time. And if you have this salt cellar sitting at home, you're in the money. Dating back to 1890, only 500 were made, and it's now worth £20,000. It's a replica of the original made by the Italian artist Benvenuto Cellini, that is now valued at a staggering £25 million. Lovely quality box. Mm. It's quite stylish. It's got the engine turning. The shape is lovely. Make a nice gift for somebody. Good. That's great news. And the vases? That'd be comfortable to pay £500 for the pair of vases and for the box. Mm. Could you... Could you give us another 20? It's for a good cause. Still with your old tricks, eh? Mind you, it used to be £500 more. This time it's just £20 more, so I think I can swallow that. Shake the man's hand. Thank okay. you ever so much, Joseph. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for coming in. Nick. Great news. What happened? What happened? Tell me. 520 was the price I got for the silver. Well done, you. Well, how was she? That's a happy designer. The additional £500 means Abby can add the finishing touches to her redesign, although not everything in Barry's design has cost a fortune. Shelving shouldn't purely be utilitarian, it should also be quirky and fun, and adding an element of levity and irreverence into an interior makes it cool and tongue-in-cheek. So that's exactly what I've done here with Barry's VHSs. 
And nothing is more whimsical than a Dalek on a VHS shelf. Four weeks ago, Barry confronted his entire horde. Good God. But after struggling to part with any of his stuff at the warehouse... She's terrible. How much is Bill Oddie going to be worth in 50 years' time? You bought 30 copies of the Radio Times. It's like a rag doll. A trip to a hypnotherapist helped him to finally let some of it go. Come on now. Exterminate, exterminate. I fight, dude. I fight. <laughs> Abby began work transforming his home. But has the struggle been worth okay. it? Okay. Can her redesign of the key rooms inspire Barry to keep his collections from overrunning his home ever again? Wow. Wow. Before, Barry's living room was piled high with so much stuff, there wasn't even enough room to think. Now it has what every sci-fi fan dreams of, space. The walls have been painted a deep, dark and dramatic bulrush brown. And contrasting audaciously against them, the bright orange desk. It's orange. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but look how beautifully it works with the brown. And illuminating it all is a sleek, chic light. It's different, isn't it? Blimey. <laughs> do you like it, Barry? I do, yes. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's a big reaction for you. I love the table. It's more like a pebble shape, isn't it? It's sort of a sci-fi table, isn't it? What are you going to think? Oh, I must have fallen asleep in a charity shop. I'm woken up in a show home. <laughs> it's hard to imagine how it was beforehand, to be honest. It is, isn't it? It just yeah. You just completely forget it. So yeah. I told you I'd up your star ratings and you'd like it, but you didn't believe me. Well, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's very hard to sort of see things in a different way like that. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. It does take that radical change, doesn't it? Well, you can't get more radical than this, really. No. Before, the conservatory was so packed, Uncle Barry's nephews didn't have space to play. Now it's just what Barry wanted. A room fit for entertaining his family. The lush plant provides a link to the outside world, adding that all-important splash of colour. And bringing a touch of fun to the whole scheme is the mischievous 3D wallpaper. Wow, it's different. So you now have cool, sophisticated wall lights. Much better. Which echo the black paint. And then you've got a bit of psychedelic wallpaper. I like it. The old optical illusion bit, isn't it? Multi-dimensional, I think. <laughs> what do you think, kids? Yeah, it's definitely a lot better, considering that last time I didn't even, didn't even actually get in this room. It's nice to have a, a dinner table and chairs and somewhere to actually uh, sit and have dinner again, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, uh, might even be able to have you and my kids around and maybe even bring your missus, you know. Don't forget your missus. Wow. It's different. Barry's toy room was one so chocker he struggled to enter. Now it feels roomier than the TARDIS. The lilac walls have been painted a strong, masculine grey. The storage brings order and calm to what was once chaos. And his treasured toys sit proudly on display, highlighted by their bespoke lighting. Much better colour, absolutely. I mean, what a transformation from what there was there previously. Display made out of videotapes. I actually like that. It makes a change, not having big piles of stuff in every corner. This is a supersonic CD holder. In there, you can get 3,000 CDs. That all? Barry! <laughs> <laughs> That's seriously good for me. Let me show you. So you can store CDs with or without the sleeves. So in here, 
See, you can oh, get right. tons. Good, hey? It's good. It's, it's very, very practical. Mm. Well, I think the doctor approves. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Comfy? Ooh, give us a chance. It's great. Yeah. I'm going to sit here and just chill. I hope that you don't hate me for, for pushing you on this and that, uh, that, that the end result is worth it. It's been a, a tortuous journey, but I think we've, uh, we've got to a good end. Uh, ah, yes, OK. No, no, not too much. <laughs> I'm really happy that you love this and it makes everything really worthwhile. Great pleasure to meet you, Barry. Honestly, I wish you all the best, mate. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, OK. I mean, the state of that place when we first walked in. I know, you couldn't get through any door, could you? It was just phenomenal. But I think, you know, I'm really impressed with Barry. I'm really impressed. Cheers, everybody. It's been worth it, the whole process. I mean, it's transformed the house, it's transformed me. I've got less stuff than I had before. Quite astounding, really. I mean, you just can't imagine how it was before. Now it is now. It's just complete transformation.